that starts. Okay, welcome to this um, uh, open air providers community call. So the, um, the place and the moment in the months where we try to provide you some uh, um, news about uh, our recent developments in open air with, in which concerns to repository managers. So the different managers of data sources that we have in open air. Uh, for you to stay up to date in terms of uh, so developments regarding the, the provide dashboard, the different services and functionalities in the provide dashboard, about the interoperability guidelines, uh, your presence also in the, um, in the different um, services that we have uh, in Open Air. We always try also to inform you and also to collect feedback uh, that is really important for the, the developments that we do. As, um, for, as the, the open air infrastructure uh, is, is made for you and, and by you, so with the, the, your content and that you are providing as, as providers of, um, of different kinds of research outputs in open air. So today we don't have a main topic for discussion. So we decided to, to, to share uh, four recent developments as we have lots of things to share and uh, some of them at least to, we want to receive your feedback. This is why we decided to not to have a, a main topic for discussion. So after the, the, the basic updates that I will provide now, so we will discuss um, some recent updates uh, related with our interoperability guidelines, okay? For um, uh, repository managers for, and also for Chris, uh, systems. Um, we will talk about the Chris validator, the, the, Chris, the Chris validator, uh, share with you uh, some news. Then uh, we want to present to you and discuss with you. Um, okay, this is a bit strange, okay, but no, no problem. <laughs> uh, two, two, two topics, the uses counts, uh, so that we have available in the dashboard. We want to tell you what we are uh, planning to do in terms of integrating the, the, the counter uh, five in reports in, uh, in the dashboard uh, and to collect your feedback. And also um, uh, for Argus, for the, our, our, our um, data management tool in open air, uh, what what do you think it's it's interesting uh, to have integrations between um, the provide dashboard and Argos and the repositories and and Argos? So we, it's really a short discussion about that. So let's let's use these four topics. Uh, we will discuss it, uh, present to you the novelties, get feedback from you during this uh, uh, one hour. Okay. Okay, and I see that already we have more people joining, which is great. And welcome to this community call. So, uh, recent news or developments. Uh, so, just to inform you that the uh, uh, graph version that we have currently in production that we can see and explore, and that you can see and access the information in the dashboard is from um, 19th of March. Uh, we are already preparing uh, the one for April, uh, and I suppose that until uh, after Easter and until the end of, of, of April, we will have um, an update uh, of our index. So be, be aware of this. I think it's always interesting. Be aware that we have this page here um, where we usually present the uh, put explicitly what was the last date and if there are uh, um, any relevant uh, uh, update to for you to consider so we also put their uh, relevant updates from our infrastructure or from the content providers let's say uh, another thing so um all, all uh, we, 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 we are preparing, like I said, in the last uh, in the last meeting and we want to put it in production. We just revise it with the, uh, with uh, so everything in terms of, of uh, uh, so the legal, the legal um, statements there. So the, the open air acquisition policies and the terms of use are the same since um, 2018. We have published it, they are available, publicly available. All the data sources that 
join open air need to be aware of the, those data policies but as we have um, uh, a long process so we started with uh, the driver compliance then open air uh, uh, version one of the guidelines so we we have uh, hundreds of uh, data sources um, integrated in open air uh, before the our policies were were um, updated and made available the last version in 2018 we have more uh, so resources that were in, in open air before 2018 that they have updated after 2018 so we we have we have decided uh, to to like maintain an effort to make um, everywhere everyone that is part of open air contributing with content for the, the infrastructure to be able to update the terms of use and to and to do a check that they continue to 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 agree with the terms of use uh, so um we have we have that in beta we will put it in production we want just to share it with you so it's really ready it's a kind of uh, so just receive um, a small consideration from uh, um, from our lawyer but everything is is ready i can we can we can present to you i will i will present to you um what 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 we have uh then we have other updates that this is what we are going to discuss. And then also for you to be aware that since, since 2019, we have a Trello board where we put uh, the, um, the, the plans for development, what we see as the, um, uh, the wish list or things that we are working on. So be aware that we have this Trello board and they can, can also share. We need to do some updates, but um, during 2020, we we never did any update to this Trello board, but, but, uh, but uh, we need to do it and we will continue to have this Trello board as a, a, also a way to communicate with you and for you to be informed about what are the things that we are working. So usually we present this in the community calls, but I think it's also important for the service itself to provide dashboard to have this Trello. Trello. We have for the different services of open air. We also had since I think 2019 or, or 18, in fact, I'm not sure if it is 19, but we have this Trello board. We have updated in 19 and 20, but then in 2021, 20, uh, we have decided to frozen that, but okay. Um, within other decisions of, of, of for other services we, we we will update it and keep it up to date for you to be informed about the terms of use this is what we have and what we are going you all the managers of data sources will found will find in the in the um, in the dashboard when we put it in production soon uh, let's see in the coming week maybe uh, I, I i i suppose we can do it in the coming week um so you are going to see a pop-up window for your data source like saying okay thanks for being part of open air uh please uh, update your uh, your um, terms of use or uh, so and we have like a kind of uh, check button for the accept the terms of use and agree with the reuse of full text um so and uh, at any moment you can do it in the registration process you can do it everyone will receive will see this uh, pop-up window those that are already registered those that are uh, that will register for the first time they will have like a, a, a single step specifically uh, for the terms of use um, so we want to make it more explicit than in the past uh, and uh, at any time you can come to the update uh, tab and as you can update the, the OI IPM AIDS interface or update the managers that have access to your data source, you can also update the terms of use. Okay. Um, and this is important, really important for us. I hope that you can um, do it uh, after this is important. The, the most relevant thing uh, that we would like to, to share is that um, uh, this this agreement with the, the reuse of full text we, will allow us to to have a better practice in terms of of collecting the the pdfs and the full text from your repositories so it's important always to say that open air 
does not provide full text files for public distribution okay we only use it for test mining to enrich our graph but then always we link from our services to the original data source we never link to the pdfs so we don't store the pdfs and make it publicly available we store the pdfs just for the purposes of back-end services enriching our graph and of course by enriching our graph we are enriching the type of services that we can provide to all open air users this is important we don't do the type of things that for example we have in in in, in core so i'm already sharing my screen uh, can you see it yes um okay okay uh, just to confirm if i'm sharing the browser so when someone arrives to the to the um, uh, to the dashboard for the first time after we put this in production you will see uh, these terms of use for the data sources that you manage you can do it also in the in the um, in the update tab here where you're going to see update the terms of use okay and you can update this information so as i was saying this is important because of this sentence that we have here open air will not provide the full text files for public distribution the users will access from the original data source this is just for us we don't do the type of things for example that core does where you can you can get the pdfs directly from uh, core and you don't provide uh, more visibility to the original data source as we are doing in open air this is an important difference uh, that 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 we have and that we want to keep doing uh, and uh, this is why it is uh, so important for us to to update and for people to be aware of our content acquisition policies and our uh, terms of agreement with the, the providers okay if you have any question please feel free to to ask about this okay so we have it in beta we can check it in beta but uh, we are going to put it in production soon because it's ready it's already revised it <laughs> and in fact we did a, a small revision of a text and the, uh, and the, my colleague uh, stephanie from uh, from Athena from from Athens did in fact this this um, update this morning together with my colleague andrea so everything is under control and proper prepared for this okay okay um important information for everyone so feel free to ask questions uh, so um, we you can do it at the end of this updates but feel free so we have here an interactive session because i will ask several colleagues from open air to join and to speak okay first inform important information uh, was the the terms of use now the second one is uh, about the um, horizon europe so we we so something that is natural so we already start to receiving several requests from repository managers or from project coordinators asking about how to present uh, um the the metadata uh, about outputs from horizon europe projects there are more and more projects being approved and being uh, and uh, entering into into um, an implementation phase uh, so but unfortunately we have a, a slight delay to integrate the list of projects from the european commission in our infrastructure and i i try to we, i just prepared we just i just prepared together with my colleague andrea this slide before this session just for you to share with you what we are doing in terms like for you to have an idea a clear idea that you you we can answer all your questions so what we need to do uh, for uh, the the full let's say the full implementation of the, the projects uh, list in our in our infrastructure are to work on the three or four areas so on the interoperability guidelines on the integration of the projects in our infrastructure on the integration of our of the projects in the different services of open air and then also to provide some support some training about the open science requirements in horizon europe so you can see this in this uh, timeline okay let's say what we are working now and we are ready ready to present something we we are integrating the some like the 
the the way that we are uh, implementing the the open science requirements for Horizon Europe in the bibliographic specifications, let's say from the from from your data sources. So in fact, we are not changing. Let's say we are not changing the guidelines. We are just uh, putting in the guidelines some examples or creating a, a kind of appendix, uh, specifically uh, the way that the repository managers can address the um, the the specifications from the Horizon Europe. Okay. Um, so this is what we are already working, and uh, we are already we have that those examples for version three of the guidelines. Then. We will work after this session in this creating this page in the guidelines website to clearly state what we need to do to 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 met the Horizon Europe and Open Science requirements, Open Access requirements. So we we did one page for the Horizon 2020. So we will do a similar one to Horizon Europe, but I think it's important to make it more explicit. Then. Uh, our our with the support of the open air uh, training uh, support and training standing committee we we are already ready to start delivering some guidance about the horizon europe so we are preparing three different uh, guides that we will put available uh, soon during april and may you will see in the open air website three gui uh, guides so one is is for the open science requirements in the in the in the preparation of proposals in the grant uh, proposals okay so some tips uh, about uh, how to address the open science requirements from horizon europe already in the phase of the proposal then another guide about and then two guides one specifically for research data uh, for the research data um, management and sharing uh, requirements and then the other one for the open access to publications uh, requirements okay this is what we are going to have for everyone. For you, for, then you can reuse also for your uh, research institutions, your universities, etc., and for project coordinators. These guides are in for researchers. These guides are for 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 all our stakeholders. Then we need to integrate the projects in our infrastructures. Integrating the projects in our infrastructure, the the, the projects from Horizon Europe will be made available via our APIs. Okay which also includes specific APIs, for, for, for example, for this space, as we have the book access to projects uh, from Horizon Europe and from FP7. Uh, and uh, uh, naturally, also, this uh, list of projects uh, can be consumed by you programmatically. Uh, and of course, will be made available also in the different services. So um, in Zenodo or in the claim service of, of, of Explore or in Argus. So this is something really that we are pushing a lot. It's not it's something that is not fully dependent of open air. So we are dependent also on receiving uh, that information from the, um, the, the core this system, the system that provides support to the Euro Com Commission, European Commission for, for this regards the... the, the related with Horizon Europe projects, but um, so we are in touch with them. So we are pushing a lot to do this as soon as possible because everyone needs to be to have that information as soon as possible because some repository managers are already receiving requests from project coordinators about this. But we, you can already do something. When we do this, so we will be able also to organize some webinars it's in our pipeline to do it um, as soon as possible. We are expecting to have in the first half of May these uh, webinars for project coordinators and researchers that you it's also interesting for you. Um, webinars specifically about the Horizon Europe um, open science requirements and the way that open air can support and help project coordinators. OK, I hope this slide was useful for you for you to be aware of what we are doing we are pushing to do everything that what what we have, we have here in april and in may okay we need to have it because the community need to have this uh, as soon as possible and so in in may i hope that we can we will be able to to see everything then andreas do you want me do you want to join me into tell our colleagues what we did in terms of the guidelines so related with the horizon europe so uh, and then also um, 
related with the, the, the version four of the guidelines. So. Yes, Pedro, hello, thank you very much. And um, also welcome from my side. Um, as uh, Pedro said, um, the first step for in the roadmap was to updating our guidelines um, regarding the new Horizon uh, Europe projects. For this, um, we um, integrate a new example for Horizon Europe. The Horizon Europe is a short code as HE. Um, and here uh, you see an example for the info EU repo semantics um, that are uh, used in the version three of the guidelines uh, for literature repositories. Um, you have on the uh, left side the uh, EU info repo uh, grant agreement, then the funder is the uh, European Commission, and then the funding program Horizon Europe. After um, these uh, Horizon Europe um, was this uh, the grant agreement number, and then there's uh, something more you could uh, provide an information about your projects here, but uh, you shouldn't. Um, and this is a small change in the uh, chain of the roadmap. Um, and uh, you will see, you could see this example in the latest version of the guidelines uh, available through the read the docs. You see here the link. We will provide it also in the chat afterwards. The next was um, to uh, remind um, something regarding the version four guidelines. The guidelines for version four is mostly called as literature guidelines, but it's not um, dedicated to uh, literature publications. It's uh, mostly for institutional and thematic repositories. So thematic and institutional repositories could have more than uh, literature publications. And um, in this, we are um, introduce uh, the metadata format ye underscore open air. And um, in this, we have a uh, separate namespace for dedicated elements. Um, the namespace is OR, and the uh, elements for in this new namespace are, um, you see here, resource type, funding references, uh, license conditions, and versions, files, and so on. So there are some dedicated um, elements uh, explicitly for the metadata format OIE underscore OPMEA. The guidelines are published in December 2018. And um, you see on the left side, uh, on the right side here, the uh, screenshot from the guidelines um, for version four. The um, new additional information that we have in the new release candidate for version uh, for the version 4.1 is um, to have a back practice um, example for the YEPMH batch size. Uh, mostly you know um, the batch size for repositories or for the YEPMH interface is 100 records per page. And then you have a resumption token uh, or and, and so on. Uh, in the last years, we see that our, um, the repositories, the records in the repositories are growing up. And um, we have some, we made some tests and see that uh, if we have, uh, if we could have um, batch size over 100, that is better for our harvesting system, for our aggregation system. And um, we come up to have a batch size between 100 and 500 records 
per page. It uh, depends on the resources uh, of the repository. Um, if you have could, uh, if you have the resources uh, for more than thousand records per page, that would be great. Um, but if you have uh, more than hundred, it would be better for us. Okay. So, thank you very much. Uh, for the, ah, the Chris. Um, yes, but before one. before this, uh, Andreas, just me just to reply to a question, and then you can yeah. move to this. As we have Oliver here with an important question about the previous topic about the um, the update of terms of use that we are doing. Thank you, thank you, Oliver, for your question. Why is it necessary to accept reuse of PDFs if you keep the practice of not to provide those full text directly? So, um, so we have decided mainly the two or three reasons are that uh, okay, it's a question of good practice to do this explicitly in terms of um, acceptance of the of the of the terms of the, the terms of agreement with our with our policy in the terms of use. The second one is is what is real was critical for us is that so as we are aggregating uh, content and collecting content from different data sources since 2010 so within different policies uh, uh, some data sources have updated other no uh, so some have joined after we have this last version of the policy since 2019 so we thought that so at some moment we need to do a kind of uh, of reset of this <laughs> of this uh, policy and, and ask everyone to, to, to proper update based on the current policy. So those that, uh, in fact, it will be a repetition for some, I, I, we, we understand that, but in fact, it will be like the, the, the first time formally that some data sources that are like, like let's say old uh, or early adopters of open air uh, that uh, are explicitly uh, presenting and agreeing 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 with the, the terms of use so this is the in fact the main reason so it's a good practice and it's because of all this history of um, of open air um and 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 we are we are uh, we also discuss it, and, and uh, we can we can we are happy to to receive this question and other comments. So we we discuss it a bit if we should put it like a, if it should be in the same line in the same line like uh, accept our uh, terms of use for metadata and for full text and just people do it at the same time. We have decided to put in two separate uh, like check uh, check boxes just to make this more explicit and to be comp completely transparent uh, and then also to clearly explain what we do in terms of our uh, policy with the, the full text so oliver uh, maybe you are right of the of what is behind your questions but uh, so just a question of being uh, let's say following a good practice in being pragmatic um, and transparent Okay, I can I can come back to this at the end if you have more questions, Andreas. Feel free to to add something to my answer or just to continue to the open air quiz validator. <laughs> so I would like to continue um, yes. <laughs> for the open air quiz validator. Yes. So um, maybe you are also affected from the announcement from Rackel to uh, not update uh, to the end of um, public updates for Java 8. Um, and uh, the uh, CRISP validator um, is based on Java 8 and the CRISP uh, integration for OpenAir is very important. So uh, we decided in the last weeks um, to updating the standalone CRISP validator first um, from the base uh, Java 8 version to another long-term version and you see here um, the long-term versions are 17 um, by default um, and um, there is also the uh, opportunity to have other versions uh, below uh, 17 the less uh, the late, la latest long-term version here for Java um, and in this context um, together with uh, our Eurocris partner, um, we started uh, these updates um, around the base version of Java. And I would like um, to thank you, Jan Drovak, um, 
he's also in the call, I think, um, for this help and assistance here um, to make it possible to have a new release for the OpenAI Chris validator. Um, in this case, um, the Chris validator is open source. Um, everyone can contribute to this Chris uh, through the validator source here. And um, I think we are happy, or oh, Andrea is happy to share the new link of the uh, Great. new release. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jan. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jürgen Chris. Jan, feel free if you want to say something. So, uh, Oh, thank you, Andreas. Yes, it was a cooperation between myself and Andreas, and we could make it work, which is great. And I hope uh, you can also benefit from it. The CRIS guidelines are also undergoing some uh, improvements and we hope to make them available soon. Great, many thanks, many thanks, Jan mm -hmm. and Andreas. So uh, we already cover uh, two topics. So we are, we have two other topics. So the user statistics and, and, and Argo. So we will uh, spend a little bit more time with the, the user statistics, what uh, we are integrating now, what we have, what we are integrating. And we also want to collect your feedback. So I, so we have our colleague Dimitris, that is the, the manager of this uh, specific service. Uh, that some of you are already benefiting, others that are not benefiting, you can always uh, go to the open air dashboard, uh, users counts uh, tab and uh, uh, enable uh, the, that service and you will receive some instructions on how to proceed and what you need to do in terms of interaction with, uh, with the open air and Dimitris will ensure this contact. So Dimitris, feel free yeah. now to... Yes. Okay, thanks Pedro. Uh, welcome to this community call. Um, uh, the upcoming updates regarding the usage count service are related to the new version, to the support of the new version of the counter code of practice uh, release uh, uh, five reports, which are planning, which we are planning to introduce and uh, include it in the provide dashboard. So. Um, in the, in the, as you may uh, aware, in the current status, in the current version of uh, uh, Provide, uh, we are supporting the counter code of practice uh, reports. We are offering uh, um, the main uh, uh, five reports, we, which are um, uh, provided by the counter, which are uh, which have been defined since I think 2012 from the uh, from counter. And it's uh, the release four of the of the code of practice. We are offering the article report, the item report, the repository report, the book report uh, for a number of successful requests, and the book report uh, for a number of successful section requests. Um, the upcoming updates are uh, are uh, related to the uh, new version, the counter release five. Um, which will be released in uh, in the provide dashboard the next uh, months. Um, uh, this version, this new release, will be, include only um, three main reports and one specific report for datasets. Um, the three main reports will be uh, the platform master reports, which is a report summarizing the activity for the repository, the usage activity for for the repository uh, for its month, uh, metric type and uh, item type. I will uh, uh, go into more details for metric types. Item types are uh, articles, books, uh, data set, uh, et cetera. And the platform usage report, which is a, a report uh, summarizing usage activity for this particular repository, again, uh, broken down by month uh, or uh, metric type. Um, the platform item report or the platform master report, which is a report specific for, for items, which are requested by month, metric type, item type, and repository. And finally, we are offering the reports for uh, a particular uh, item type, the data sets, uh, again, uh, which are request, uh, requested by, uh, broken down by month type and repository. This is a report which is provided by the uh, the Make Data Count uh, initiative and um, uh, has been also specified in the by uh, RD, supported by RD, RDA. 
Um, so the metric types, this is the most important change uh, that are uh, that will be that will be included in the in the new version of the counter release uh, five reports. Um, now we are talking for uh, to, for four different metric types: the total item request, total item investigations, unique item requests, and unique item investigations. Keep in mind that. Um, the current version of re the release four version supports only um, one metric type, which is the uh, initially supports only one metric type, which is the number of downloads. Uh, in OpenAir, we have extended and we added another metric type, which is the number of, of views, the metadata views. So uh, from two uh, metric types, we are moving to, uh, to uh, four uh, uh, metric types. And there is a, a little change in the definition and the semantics. Uh, uh, Pedro, if you could please move on to the next slide. So uh, the metric types in counter code of practice release uh, for definition are the total item request, which um, uh, represents the counts for, for, art, for lower article full content views across all formats like HTML and PDF. This is the, the only one which is equivalent to the release for uh, metric, uh, which is defined in release for as count and corresponds to the number of downloads for a particular item. Um, the unique item request is, uh, corresponds to, the, to count the unique article full content views uh, within a given session, regardless of the format, if it's a PDF, if it's the HTML. Uh, so in, in, in this um, metric type refers to a unique, uh, to the same session. So um, if a user views an article in PDF format or in HTML format in the same session, this will only uh, count uh, as a single uh, number, as one. Uh, the third metric type is the total item investigations, which, uh, which is a, uh, something that is, has been defined in the counter release five and counts the total number of times uh, uh, that uh, a particular item has been accessed either metadata view or full-time uh, access, full, full content access, for example, the download or a, 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 for download of a PDF or an HTML uh, view of the article. And of course, the unique item investigation, which counts unique article investigation and the requests uh, within a user uh, session. So these are the four metric types that are included in the, uh, in the counter release five update. And this is a, a pictorial view of, uh, of these uh, metrics, of these metric types. Uh, in counter release five, all um, accesses to an item are considered investigations. For example, a, a view of an abstract, a view of an HTML full text or a PDF or even download a PDF or view uh, of a, or an article pre preview. All these uh, usage events are considered investigations. Uh, the, the difference is that the, if you, access uh, uh, the full text or download the, P, uh, the PDF or view the PDF of a particular item, this is considered uh, a request. So this is the main difference from the counter release uh, for uh, metric type. In counter release for metric types, we have only uh, have, we only have um, the uh, item views for open air and item downloads as they, as they initially defined in the protocol. For counter release five, we have investigations which con, um, correspond to any kind of access to the uh, um, any type of access to the uh, item and request which correspond to uh, the actual view uh, of the full um, content of the of the item um, can you move so uh, just an example scenario for example a, a user Susan is researching the history of Porto in uh, the repository of, uh, of Minho. And uh, from a list of search results, uh, she uh, opens three articles uh, abstracts. So the counts are uh, for total, we have three total item investigations and three unique item investigations. But um, after reading the abstract, Susan uh, decides to download the PDF for two of the articles and uh, the count change uh, to five total item investigations. So we have three. Uh, let's say views and two uh, downloads. Uh, the unique item investigations remain three, uh, but we have since we have two downloads, we have two two total item requests and two total uh, unique uh, item uh, requests. So this is the big difference uh, in the um, in the release uh, five. 
Um, so, can, can we move on? So, for the coming updates, um, we have the option either to uh, continue supporting the counter release four and counter release five uh, at the same time. So, we are offering both type of reports, or um, uh, decide to remove, uh, uh, based on your feedback, of course, decide uh, remove the counter release uh, five uh, reports. So we want your feedback if, if you would like to maintain both release four and release five reports. And, um, uh, and if you think that the release five, four reports uh, are no longer of interest and should be uh, removed. Uh, just a, qu a quick note that um, the graphs, the, the charts that will be offered will be remained as, as they are. Uh, we will continue to provide uh, uh, the, uh, the number of, uh, view, of metadata views and the number of downloads for each item. This is different from the counter uh, reports that we are offering um, with the new uh, metrics. So uh, uh, please give us your feedback if you want to uh, keep this uh, um, the, both reports, this schema with uh, uh, two uh, different kinds of, uh, of reports, or um, re remove the release uh, for. And uh, yeah. thank you very thank much. You, thank you, thank you, Dimitris. So uh, now, if you can provide us, if you, we have here for, for minutes for you to share some thoughts, so uh, please um, just uh, un unmute yourself and give your opinion. So um so the information the, the information is vi is visible in this uh, uses uh, counts um uh, area okay uh, so to enable the service and to and to um, and to access the reports so now you you we have this uh, screen share as as we have the in this screenshot we have access to this for reports we want to to make the the other uh, reports related with the the, the counter five uh, available, uh, we are open to to, to the feedback. Uh, I must say that we 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 have uh, we already discussed and then we have an opinion in the in the management team of provide that we should uh, stop uh, providing the counter four and start with the counter five. <laughs> but this is just uh, our, our idea. So. If there are a strong uh, opinion from, from from users that they want to keep uh, for some time uh, reports from counter four, uh, we can we can receive it. If 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 any of you want to 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 give your opinion, feel free. So to write it in the chat or to or to or to unmute yourself. Um, anyone with a strong opinion about this uh, that we should just move to five and and start offering the five um, set of reports. So this. Um... With with this uh, different types of, of metrics. Any opinion? We have some time for that. So we only have one more topic for discussion about Argos, but uh, if you want to give your, your opinion if you don't have access yet to the, the to the to the service let's you can enable the service let me see if i if i see it here okay so we are talking about this so just to make it more explicit because i was i was doing um i was sharing the the example in beta and not in so this is what you see. So a repository that they have access to the to this service, you can see it, and then you can get the 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 reports based on this and and run and run the the query that you want. So we want to uh, discard this possibility and just put here the 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 other the counter five that will become the supported report for us and for, to 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 make it available for you. I think with uh, with uh, good quality, high level of, of quality, as we have updated and the, the statistics are being uh, uh, updated uh, in line with the index update, which is something that we really want to offer a, a service with uh, quality. 
Okay, feel free to give your opinion. There are some uh, users also here from Portugal, for example, that are already using this long time. So if you have opinions, just share it here uh, in the in the in the chat. Okay. Perfect. So uh, let's move to the other topic, and then if you have uh, any comment about this, you can. Uh, give and offer your comment at the at the end of this meeting um, the last topic uh, is about uh, let me check if i my colleague ellie is still here yes yes uh, so present. yes hello, hello, hello so it's about uh, so we, we can have uh, we can organize our idea is to organize a specific call with uh, having the argos and and the integrations with provides and links to repository managers um, discuss it in the in one call only uh, but this is already to open a bit the the discussion and for you to start thinking about of what are the relations between these two services and what are the what is the relation between um, the services that repository managers manage and and the argos as a, a, a tool to deliver and prepare data management plan so uh, we have one slide for you to, to share with you. So Eli Eli will will present what are the the the, the basic ideas behind these uh, integrations. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Pedro. Thank you for for having me. Uh, yes. So Argus, uh, as uh, Pedro mentions, is a TMP tool. Is a tool that creates machine actionable templates for data management plans. Uh, that researchers use then to write their, uh, to, to answer the questions and then write the DMPs and submit to the project office, either at the European level or at the national level, uh, wherever they need to. Oh, thank you very much for adding the link also there. Uh, wherever they need to um, adhere to the policy uh, they have to, about RDM. So uh, Argos is not just a tool that creates the MPs, but also connects, uh, it aims to connect, and it already does, connect different data workflows together. So the vision is that uh, the data management plans are semi-automated with validated information uh, so that researchers have uh, less of a burden uh, when it comes to writing the DMPs and also uh, uh, enhance the data sharing incentives. Uh, so they, they feel like if they go to share the data uh, in the repository, then uh, they will automatically have some of this invalidated information inside their DMPs. We have already started doing that, and I will add the link for you to see uh, with, with a feature that pre-fills uh, pre -fills metadata coming from Zenodo. Uh, because Argus is an opener instance, and it integrates with all the opener services. So currently, the repository that we're using to publish the DMPs, but also to get information to add uh, as uh, answers in the questions, the respective questions of the template are coming from Zenodo. Uh, but we could do, of course, the same uh, with uh, all other repositories. So the integrations behind Argos uh, and, and uh, what with our thoughts be behind this are uh, twofold. So there are two different levels. One is to integrate with Provide, right, which is a service that Opener offers and it uh, targets all uh, so it, it informs all the repository uh, managers uh, and then the integration has to, has to do with sending notifications to repository managers when a data management plan has um, re refers to the specific repository for uh, their data sharing, uh, for the project's data sharing. Then a notification should be sent to repository managers, that, that's, the, that's the thought, and uh, the repository manager can uh, get an idea of um, what data uh, are expected to be coming and what's the size of this data and so on. Um, and, you know, make any, uh, inform those researchers maybe, uh, ask, ask the researchers if they need more information about um, uh, things that have to do with data management plan and researchers don't know, for example, about backup. Uh, things about preservation uh, policies, uh, things that are difficult for a researcher to know. Uh, and then the second one for provide is to offer a selection of repositories to publish the MPs for not only Zenodo, but being more inclusive uh, to, to properly um, push 
uh, the DMPs with the correct resource type, because this is also, uh, if, if we're looking at, um, at the whole uh, data uh, that are out there, it's difficult to identify, to find, to, uh, to exploit the data sets uh, that are um, about the data management plans. So uh, there is, uh, we're using the core, uh, repo, uh, the, the core vocabulary, and we are pushing, we're exposing the, uh, the data management plans as uh, the, with the correct resource type, and we would like to enhance this practice uh, through Argos. Uh, and that is for the provide side of things. Uh, and then we can, of course, and, and we, will, we will further discuss this in the next call, I think, Pedro, um, to, to see how integrations can uh, be made at the level of the repository itself. So instead of Zenodo here, you could have your own. And instead of pre-filling information only from Zenodo, you could have yourself. Uh, and then we start creating, you know, all this, um, all these links and, and coming back to the vision, we complete uh, the vision of semi-automating the, uh, the creation of the MPs. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm really happy to, to know your thoughts. I don't know if you ever considered something uh, like this, like integrating with a data management planning tool or um, uh, offering a, you know, APIs to data management plans so that the researchers can uh, can have more validated information to choose from when answering their questions or things like that. And I'm happy. I'm happy to discuss them and, and know your thoughts. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Ellie. Okay, this was really the idea to share with you that we have um, these possibilities. So um, we can do uh, several things as Ellie identified, and uh, we must do those that are more relevant for, for, for us, for, for the users of, the, of, of both services. So um, uh, having this um, open air infrastructure, these uh, different uh, services in the open air ecosystem, so we can benefit from this uh, kind of integration. So think about that. So we are going to organize a specific call about that. So if, if you have some strong idea, so we have time now because we have three minutes more. So feel free to jump in, to unmute yourself and to give your opinion or to write it in the chat. You can always comment also in our Google document that we have, we can reply later. So if you have any opinion, just uh, just uh, share with us. So uh, what, what I think is important for us as repository managers to understand that, uh, so this is already working with Zenodo. Okay, okay. Zenodo is from the, the services ecosystem of open air, which makes sense, but we can do it also, this integration to publish DMPs in literature repositories uh, automatically or to facilitate that integration. I think this is one, uh, one use case that I think you should consider and we can think about that. Uh, the other that I, uh, as, as, as provide manager, I would like really to have is to inform data repository managers that someone in a specific project have the intention to put data in their repository so we can inform them so we can anticipate this this need okay so a specific researcher stated in the dmp that i will use data repository from uh, from norway uh, that averse norway to put the data and so to to deposit data or to store data so they can we can inform the repository managers which i think is good send notifications um, and, uh, and, and, and maybe the similar situation for those public DMPs that are available. So we can do something with the literature repository managers. So think about these possibilities. I think uh, Ellie was quite clear <laughs> in the possibilities that we are opening for you. Any comments about this? And just to say, Pedro, that we will also have some use cases to, to show. Uh, in the in this call, in the next call, so I, I guess this will also help. Okay, not sure if uh, Jose want to say something or to ask something. You just open your um, your uh, webcam. I'm not sure if you want to say something. No. 
José Carvalho. No, no, okay. Thank you. No problem, no problem. Okay, feel free to share your ideas with us. So send it to helpdesk at openair.eu or directly to Ellie. To the, to, and for sure, this will be important to, for us. Uh, okay, <coughs> to design these possibilities or to... I think it's more important to prioritize, prioritize <laughs> these possibilities, what is more relevant for the community, and then we can prioritize it as, as, as services. Okay, Ali, many thanks for, 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 for this, this um, Thank you. presentation and to be able to join our community call. Okay, and we are coming to, to the end. I'm not sure if you have any other question about any other issue. We have already replied to some. So be aware that we, we, we have these community calls every, every month. So the community call is already scheduled for the first Wednesday of May. That will be on the 5th of May. Um, no, no, on the 4th, 4th of May. I was looking to 2021. The 4th of May will be the first Wednesday of the month. So, and we will dedicate um, uh, some time to organize this call also for you. Be aware of the newsletter. I think uh, almost all receive our newsletter. If you think that there are others from your institutions or from your country that may benefit from this newsletter, share with them, please. Uh, we, we send it every like first Monday or first Tuesday of the month also to anticipate this, this call. So be, be aware of that. And all the information, presentations, and recordings are made available in the in the web page. So, any other comment? Any other question? Uh, so, feel free. So, two requests, if I may, at the end. So, be aware that we want your feedback uh, regarding the the integration of the Counter Five reports in the user statistics um, functionality in the dashboard. So send it to the help desk or directly to Dimitris. Dimitris already shared the email, it's in the chat. And the same for Argus. If you have any idea, check this slide in the slides. And if you have any idea, any strong idea, and you would like to have your repository also integrated, like, like we have the integration with Zenodo, um, uh, state that opinion to, 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 to Eli, sending the, sending the information to Argus that, uh, at openair.eu. And uh, be aware that we have all these plans to integrate to the, for the integration of Horizon Europe projects in open air. So you can inform your project coordinators, researchers about this. Hope that we manage everything that I told you in terms of guides, integration of the guidelines, integration of the API, et cetera, until the end, uh, in the coming two months, in April and in May, okay? Thank you very much. So it's already half past three, half past two in Portugal. Uh, of past four in Turkey, I suppose. Do I saw some colleagues from Turkey also here. So bye-bye all. So thank you very much for joining this community call. I, I hope that it was useful to receive all this information. And thank you very much for all my colleagues to, to support me in this, um, in this community call today. Dimitris, Andreas, Jan, Eli, and of course my colleague Andre that is here in the, in the back end providing all the needed support information. Bye-bye all. So I will keep the call open just for you to copy paste some of the links and then we close it, okay? Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.